Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is my test world and in this video we're going to be looking at an add-on module called Visual Active Effects. Now the great thing is this module is not huge and it doesn't rely on anything else so you can just install this one module on its own. We don't need anything else which is really really nice. So here it is Visual Active Effects. Now, what does it, it do? Okay, well, it helps you visualize the active effects. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of obvious, really, isn't it? Um, so if we take Haley here, we have a whole bunch of conditions that potentially Haley could be afflicted with, um, you know, charmed and concentrating, poisoned, etc. All of this mod does uh, is, you know, you, you judge, but I think it's very useful, even though it's very simple, that if we say Haley is paralyzed, top right corner, we get two little icons that make that really clear the what is actually affecting this particular one. Now, for your players, that might make it, you know, if they're zoomed out like this, those icons stay the same. Now, you probably just also saw that really cool thing is if I hover over it, I get a description incapacitated can't take actions or reactions oh right uh, I'm paralyzed what does that mean so this is the, and this is the cool part not just the fact that it shows them up there what's affecting you but it gives you that um, that rule book description of what that actually means you're paralyzed so what can I do if I'm paralyzed well um, you're incapacitated can't move or speak right okay so can't do that oh I can't move but I can still talk no you can't um, automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws etc etc uh, so th that that's kind of it I mean like shortest video ever <laughs> not quite done yet am I um, but there we go poisoned how does that actually affect oh right I have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks it just helps bring in a lot of that information really quickly and really useful especially if you've got newer players or if you're you know even as a dm i mean i can't remember what everything does what what gives disadvantage on attack rolls or saving throws or whatever it, it can be really confusing to remember um especially when you've got so many potential conditions what happens if you're frightened what does that actually do um ignore the message about uh, sequencer but frightened oh yeah disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the, uh, while the source of fear is within line of sight, so only when it's in line of sight. Ah, right, okay. And it just can help clarify some of those rules at the game table. You know, what does that mean? It means this, means, oh, let me check the book. You don't need to check the book, it's right there. So really, really handy for that. Now, it doesn't just work for those conditions by right clicking, but conditions imposed by spells. So uh, if Haley wants to... Um, she might cast Shield of Faith on herself. And top right corner, she's concentrating. What does that mean? Well, it's actually telling her that she's concentrating specifically on Shield of Faith. Now, there isn't a full description for that. Um, but you've got it in the chat anyway from where you cast it. And, of course, the player can just hover over their own spell to see that. But it does help just reiterate what they've got going on. And it will add it with other things. What else can we do? We can bless yourself, Haley. Yep. Now, because it's concentration, of course, it's dropped one to pick up the bless. So we've changed up here what we have going on, which is great. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really nice. Let's pop Nundro over here. Because what we can actually do is straighten Nundro up. Come on, mate. Sort yourself out. Um, <laughs> I haven't set the tokens to not turn. Sorry about that. Um, so Haley can actually cast bless on Nundro. Um and then she can also cast Shield of Faith on Nundro. But of course, because of her concentration. But if we look at Nundro, he's got the Shield of Faith on there. So it's updating for him as well. So just in case that wasn't obvious, even if we're casting on... So he's going by what effect is actually on that token. Uh, which is great. Absolutely great. We can do Guiding Bolt. But no... Nundro, you can't do Guiding Bolt. <laughs> we can do Guiding Bolt. We can do whatever we need to do. Um, and it's just going to update that. Now, some things, of course, have quite or potentially... Come on, get on with it. 
boo. Uh, except we missed. Um, some things potentially have quite a lot of uh, effects applied when you cast a spell. So Haley, for example, if somebody casts a sleep spell, not only does that put her asleep, but it makes sure she's prone and incapacitated and unconscious. So she's got all of those effects on at the same time as a result. And with the automations, when you cast a sleep spell, that is indeed what it does. So if a character is put to sleep and they go, oh yeah, but I can still do, it's like, well, actually, no, all of these things affect you. And once you're no longer um, asleep, you're still left prone. Um which I really like. And again, it clarifies some of those rules around things like prone, because uh, it is something people go, oh, well, I'm prone, therefore everybody gets advantage to attack. Well, no range attacks don't. Uh, top roll against a creature has disadvantage if the attacker with, sorry, an attack roll against the creature has advantage if the attacker was in five feet. Otherwise, the attack roll has disadvantage. So, in other words, any ranged attack against somebody prone is at disadvantage. Melee attacks against somebody who's prone get advantage. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah? Which is why if you're fighting a manticore, you want to hit the deck. <laughs> so, it's a really simple little add-on. It doesn't do a huge amount, but it could be a real big difference, I didn't mean to do marked, uh, it could be real big difference to your party to potentially stop a little bit squabbling over rules or especially with new players, as I said at the beginning, just to help them understand what those conditions mean. Now my Curse of Strahd game, I do have some relatively new players. They've not been playing for too long and there's still plenty of effect. I'm, there's some of them have never encountered the poison status effect, for example. So I'm probably going to use that. Um, because it's, why not? It's not interfering with anything. And it's one of those mods that it doesn't change the way we play at all. It's just a little extra reference thing, which is really, really nice. I like those little bits. They, they add without detracting at all. Anyway, yeah, just a short one. I just thought I would show you that. That might be really useful for you, or you might decide that it's just more clutter on your screen. Whatever. Thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one.